Hey there, welcome back guys. This video is gonna be about remote ID. Apparently it's the topic and the talk of town. So I just started doing research on it. I see all, all these different videos and everyone giving their takes on it, but no one really is testing it except some guys that, that are spending, I don't know if you've probably seen their channel where they, you know, they spend a couple hundred bucks on these um, receivers or modules and they attach them to the drones. And I think by the time that launches and comes out, if, if remote ID does happen, um, those modulars are probably going to be smaller and cheaper um, so that everyone can afford them. But I don't think that the remote ID is going to work after doing some tests myself without any modules, just with some apps that you could actually download from the app store. Uh, and I'll just give you my feedback in real time from the um, experience that I have. So as you can see here, I'm just doing a night flight and I launched the app um, and the app's supposed to tell you where the drones are in the sky. I'm not sure if it's electrical interference because of uh, the, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, lightning. I, that I don't know, but all I know is that when you launch the app, uh, drones and people start flying from this, out of nowhere from the sky and automatically populating into the area that I'm flying in. And I look around and I don't see anything. There's nothing in the air. I spin the drone around, nothing. Um, but eventually the app does find me. And as you can see, I'm about, I'm about a total distance of 400 feet from the drone. Max I go is probably 500 feet. Height is about 306 feet. Um, and as you can see, uh, people and other drones keep populating in, in the area. I look uh, in, and nothing. Um, I walk down the street to the corner because um, apparently there was someone that showed up. Nothing. So the app, there, there's definitely some interference with the app. And I, you know, I wouldn't rely on it because um, one, when it does recognize you, it puts it into reverse. And two, when it does recognize you, you see your drone, you can click on it. Um, it actually puts the height and distance incorrectly, which is not really optimal, um, f you know, for, for, for safety and um, f for, for monitoring and, and regulating a flight. Um, so let's say, look, for example, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and um, maybe zoom in. Try the Pro because we pressed the Pro version of the app. Um, maybe you'll appear, but as you can see, the pro version, one drone, standard, and if you click on the law enforcement version, uh, it takes a while to kick in. As you can see, you have the pilot information, but this pilot probably doesn't even exist. This is probably taking the, um, it's probably picking up everyone's uh, air tag, you know, like, because that's the only thing I can think of that would be in the area if you don't look into the sky. Okay, look, yep, there we go, more people. And then it tells you that I'm just gonna quit the app and relaunch it again. If I just do a search in the app store, if you type in um, drone, whoops, one second. Drone, uh, remote, uh, yeah, type in remote um, ID, and then that shows up, drone remote ID, and you scroll down, you get the last one from the bottom, and then of course an alert happens. It tells you where you are, pin drops. Of course the drone's still in the air. It doesn't recognize it, uh, but eventually it does. There are some apps that work out there that, I, that I've tried aside from this one, and it does see the drone. And, and this is a similar experience that happens, but the, um, you have to of course click okay. I got it. If sometimes if you zoom in and zoom out, up, oh, so there, there's, that's supposed to be me, but look, it's actually in reverse because I'm a little further down from, and I, I actually walked out down the road, nothing, no drone, no person. Um, that's, so it's sort of, uh, and look, if you look there, whoop, if we click okay, just, you get a lot of alerts that just pop up. Um, and if you see that red dot is connected to that drone, um, and then you have if you zoom in a little bit, it's, see, it's right down the road and I'm the only one on my street that actually has a drone. Um, and I actually know the people that live in, down the road, um, basically know all my neighbors, to be honest with you. Um, of course, the alert keeps popping up. 
Um, and then, as you can see, it turns into a game of Twister where um, things just start. Now you look, look, you see two people that just connected. So somehow, I guess, the, what are they using? A buddy box? Like, so um, this person is connected to that person. Maybe they're tethered to the, uh, and then it's like a whole labyrinth. But then look, um, eventually I'll show up. In the, um, of course, you can click there and, and, and see the information. Uh, oh, there you go. I There I am. So it shows me, right? And if you look down, it connects me to another person, but doesn't connect me to the drone. So somehow I showed up. I zoomed in. Sometimes when you zoom in, it separates you. So that's a normal feature that happens with a lot of apps, especially GPS. So as you can see, but it didn't connect me to a drone. It connected me to another person that's tethered to me and to the drone. Um, yeah, so the, I think the remote ID needs a lot. If you see where I am, um, let's see if we see where I am. I'm only 300 feet in height and 450 feet away. Um, and and the, of course, when you click on the, uh, the lo location where, where it says that you are, it actually triples the distance. So it says you're 1500 feet away. Uh, in this case, I believe it said that I was 523 feet away when I'm actually 77 feet away in distance um, on one of them when I had clicked on it. And as you can see, um, let's see, eventually I show up in the app, uh, but it doesn't give you enough time, but it's catching everyone else who's not in the air. Um, why, I don't know. Um, but this is why I don't think remote ID is going to be, um, it's going to work because you, you could be like I am 300 feet in height, 50 feet in distance, and then they launch the app to see where you are. Um, and then the app says you're 1500 feet away or 2000 feet away when you're not because, you know, thankfully you'd have a flight plan. Um, but there were some instances where the distance didn't match the distance to the flight controller. And that could be um, penalizing, you know, because I could see law enforcement enforcing basically what they see and then your word going against theirs, uh, which is no fun, of course. So let's see what we have here, what's happening. So as you can see, things just keep falling out of the sky. But uh, I'm gonna do a test with another remote ID app to see if it works. Um, but if, oh, there I am. See, voila. So that it, a person appeared on the blue dot. The, the drone is 50 feet away, right? And if I zoom out, um, it looks like we lost it. But as you can see, it found me and then it didn't find me. So I could see interference coming into play with the uh, remote ID experience. And he's like, no, I was 50 feet. I swear. It's like, nope. You're lying, you know, um, so, or, <laughs> or I could see them getting confused and mistaking your flight plan for their flight plan. So then, you know, you're, you're held accountable for someone else's malicious flight because, uh, somehow their app put you there. Um, so, you know, that it's, I think there are a lot of tweaks that need to come out, um, and there should be a beta version of remote ID launching before the launch. Um, otherwise, people are just going to go rogue when holding folks accountable for the flight experience that either happened or didn't happen or did happen because the app said it happened. Um, and, you know, that, that's just not right. Um, and But it would, it would work to your advantage if you found a really good attorney because, you know, the, the facts speak for themselves because the flight plan on your controller um, may or may not match the flight uh, experience that was being conducted at the time of the app. But, it, you know, it, it shouldn't really matter. You should just be able to fly. Um, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and let's see what we have here still. And that's it. So, you know, what are your thoughts on remote ID? Are you, are you going to buy a drone uh, and customize it so that, um, I mean, it's not like you would not be able to launch if you built your own drone. I actually, um, in a future video, I'm going to try and build a drone and, and see how it flies. Hopefully it can fly in manual mode. 
Um, other than that, I would have to go to a bigger field to fly in. Um, uh, no, hopefully it could fly in sport mode because manual mode I'm still working on. But as you can see, uh, the, the remote ID still needs a lot of work. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos and share your thoughts on remote ID. Like what's your take on it? What are your plans? Um, are you going to comply, not comply, have one drone for compliance and another drone for whatever. Anyway, hope this video has helped you and I'll see you all next time.